Today we'll be discussing aqueous-based products like HCG and peptides, how to reconstitute them, store them, and how to self-administer a subcutaneous injection. To do this, we're gonna need a few different supplies. The supplies you'll need for this are a large gauge needle to draw up the bacteriostatic water and mix it into the product, the bacteriostatic water, which is important because this water helps to prevent any bacteria from going inside of your solution, the medication, which today is BPC-157, which is a very useful healing peptide, the syringe to inject it with, alcohol swabs, something to clean your hands, and your sharps container. Medications such as peptides like this BPC-157 come in a form that's lipolyzed, basically meaning that it's a dehydrated puck in there that will need to be reconstituted with the water. To begin the reconstitution process, first start by cleaning your hands. Today we're using hand sanitizer. Take your large gauge needle out of the package. Set it aside. Take the tops off of both your bacteriostatic water and your medication. Using an alcohol swab, you're gonna clean the both of them. Now to begin, I like to draw up a small amount of air, around one to two cc's, and inject this into the vial. It should be vacuum sealed, and it will suck through. This is to prevent the fluid from damaging the peptide later. Now, draw up the amount of fluid that you want from the bacteriostatic water. For this medication, I'll be drawing up 7.5 milliliters, which can also be written as 7.5 cc's. Now, you'll carefully grab your vial of BPC or whatever peptide you're using, place it in the top, and slowly let the fluid fill into the vial. We like a slow and controlled injection into the vial as to not disrupt any of the peptide because it can be very fragile. Another good tip is to angle the needle and shoot the fluid towards the wall so that it slowly rolls into the peptide as to not disturb it. These steps, such as a slow injection and pointing it towards the side of the wall, are important because coming in too fast can damage the peptide and make it not as potent. You may find that there's still some solid pieces within the fluid. Try to avoid shaking this. Instead, I prefer a technique where I place it between my hands and lightly spin it back and forth to mix it. You could also just let it sit out and dissolve by itself. We don't want to shake it because again, these peptides are very fragile and we could damage them and affect the potency. Now Isaac will be demonstrating how to draw up the solution and how to self-administer a subcutaneous injection. So first, he'll begin by sanitizing his hands. You can do this either with soap and water or hand sanitizer. Next, he'll take an alcohol swab and clean the top of the medication vial. Doing this limits our risk of infection. Next, he'll take the syringe and draw up the prescribed dose. In this case, we'll be doing uh, 0.25 cc's. Also on the syringe will be uh, labeled as 25 units. After drawing up the desired amount of medication, I'll recap the needle. Place the medication aside for now, and now we'll prep the site for injection. To do this, again, we'll use an alcohol swab. And for the subcutaneous injection, we prefer the lower abdomen and some of the subcutaneous fat. So he'll wipe with the alcohol, starting in the middle and working out. After it's dried for about 10 seconds without blowing on it, he'll take off the cap and ensure that there's no air in the syringe. You can do this by flicking it and pressing out a small bit of fluid from the tip of the needle. After that, he'll use his left hand to grab a bit of skin and fat, and he can come in at a 45 degree angle, put the needle all the way into the skin until the plastic part is touching the skin, and inject in a slow, controlled manner. After all the medication is administered, he will then safely recap the needle and dispose of it properly in a sharps container. If you have any questions about this process, please reach out to your patient care coordinator.